Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Trauma Research Foundation's TRF Tuesday. This is our weekly mini workshop series from Bright Voices in Therapeutic Embodiment. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's the best way to let YouTube know that you find this content valuable and to show it to more people. Welcome to Pop Goes the World. Gong, take it away. Hello. Thank you, Mary. That was such a that didn't sound like me at all. <laughs> that sounded like a really dis- decent person. But my name is Gang. Um, I understand how that might make some of you uncomfortable, but in this more global world, just get let's just get used to it. <laughs> my name is Gang. So let me start. I was going to introduce myself in one go, but I've I realized as my presentation goes on, I will be slowly introducing myself. So I think I'll save that for later. But like she said, I am an art history major and here I am. I'm a trauma therapist. But one thing I think like many of you, I found that there were a hundred roads towards mental health. It wasn't just one road, but because I went through a large depression when my mom got Alzheimer's and was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2015. And my mom, I'm one of the lucky ones where I had, I have a really good mom. She's still alive, by the way. Uh, and um, I think that was the first time I really felt alone. So generally, when you have scaffolding around you as a child, and I, you lose your mom in the, in such a, you know, Alzheimer's is so fascinating because she's there, but she isn't. So it's like science fiction. So I had to deal with it um, horribly. But I always learned that studying comforts me. So I just went dove in and, and did it. So this for the six weeks, we're going to get to know each other. Hopefully, you come back if you feel more interested. But to give you an overview, I have, um, let me show you how we're going to do this. Because it might be, just a second, it might be interesting for you. I run a group called Project Steady Asia. And yes, my name is Gang. That's the first slide it's supposed to be. Pop Goes the World is actually a song by a Canadian group called Men Without Hats. You probably don't know it, but I was playing it as you all entered the Zoom. Um, This is really, you probably read the course, that's why you signed up. But what I really want to say is that, do you know how, do you know how you have parties and then when everyone leaves and there's only four of you left and you're all in the kitchen trying to help or et cetera, but mostly slightly recovering from being drunk an hour ago and everybody has this great conversation around the kitchen. Usually that's when it happens. Please type an exclamation point if you've had uh, like after a party and people left in the kitchen and that's when the real conversation happens. If you know what I'm talking about, please type an exclamation point on the chat box. Oh my gosh, right, Tally, Nina? <laughs> so apparently it wasn't the main dinner that was the shit. I, is it okay to say that? That wasn't the thing. It's 4 a.m. I can say that. After, after the dinner and after everyone has left, and it's just a few people left, that's when you get the honesty, the hardcore sharing, and then the oh, by the ways, but they're actually the most meaningful by the ways. That's when it happens. I realized I have a feeling I host parties to get that 2 a.m. conversation with people who stay. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Please thumbs up if I'm making sense. Or exclamation point, right? Okay, Holly, thank you. So then I realized, wow, how I wish I could replicate those two AMs, if you know what I'm saying. And so I realized we can in school. <laughs> and exactly, Stephanie, that's when it happens. Uh, maybe someone's washing the dishes, the good friend, and someone's just sitting down and recovering from, um, or maybe hydrating to prevent a hangover the next day, that's when it all happens. So I figured I really want you to feel like your Tuesdays with me uh, in the subsequent five, um, in the subsequent five weeks, I think from now six, you will, I hope you, we, you, we will take on that attitude with each other. It's not strictly a class, but certainly as you know by now, education happens way more outside the walls of the classroom. And a lot of times in conversation and most of the time in the micro conversations. So that's kind of the attitude I'm taking towards this class. Hopefully you'll be with me as you uh, come back on Tuesdays. So what I read, my goal for this class objective is that <laughs> I used to make I used to make stop scrolling the internet and go outside and walk I used to be that used to be my goal 
for children and the, the young ones and even the people my age. I'm 51, in case you're curious. Um, and I realized, my God, I don't think I can let people stop scrolling. So we might as well inject learning while people are, all, are scrolling. Does this make sense? So when you're scrolling the news about Amber Heard or um, recently Kim Kardashian, Pete David, whoever it is that you scroll about, rather than just view it with the usual set of eyes, I really wanted to have this course to give you a new set of lenses so that when you're watching it, you're like, oh, Maybe not so much for judgment, but just to have a different set of lenses. Because sometimes we get so lost in rabbit holes of stories and breakups and etc. That we, I really would like to say, hey, when you're scrolling a breakup between famous people, that's actually a classroom learning, classroom learning for possible disorders, for attachment theory, you can actually learn stuff. Now, look, I don't know what you're Quote, uh, for lack of a better word, I don't know what your level of understanding is of trauma-informed approaches. I don't know where you are in your mental health journey. This could be your very first foray into it, or it could be one of the things you just want to do on Tuesdays. But uh, I wish I could make the, the class more bespoke <laughs> to whatever level you're in, but we're going to do it just as an overview. And if, it fe if you feel it's too slow for you, I really encourage you to like type on the chat box and the chat So you can add to it. I'm uh, development trauma. Oh, hi, Hinch and Holly. Uh, thank you for that comment, Holly. We will talk later. I'll proceed. So this is the, the um, flow of our program. If you notice, I'm really kind of following someone's lifetime. It's not so strict on the chronos part, on the chronology, but we will start with origin stories today. Because as you well know by now, when you're on a journey towards a um, more mentally regulating state, it's very wise to go back to your childhood, no matter how challenging. But I know that the, serious, uh, the seriousness and the gravity and the criticalness of learning about our traumas or exploring with a trauma-informed uh, approach uh, can be and is difficult, and it will be and can be painful. That's why I really wanted to not trivialize it at all with pop culture, but to, to show you that it really is everywhere and it really is universal. And there are other approaches. And that on some days when you don't feel like deep diving into the muck of all our other things we've recovered from, thank God, some we've recovered from. I also want you to know that there's another approach and it's sometimes in the, in the, in the things we encounter every day when we're scrolling right before sleeping. If I blank out, that's only because it's four in the morning. I'm kidding. I was telling Mary right before the class, I didn't realize I was really going to teach at 4 a.m. my time. And I said, and every other week I'll ask myself, why did I say yes to this class? And I'll tell you why I said yes. Because there are people like you who actually take time out to sign. And you'll actually take time out an, uh, for an hour uh, to listen to a stranger from across the globe because you are one of the few people, no, I think you're one of the people that know there's a lot of learning when we listen to each other. I said yes because I wanted to listen to all of you. In fact, today there are 27 teachers and I am the one student here. Let's start with origin stories. Recovery mode. Ooh, useful 72. Super cool. You know them. You know all of them. And you already know what their origin stories are. It depends on which franchise you watch or you read there are several versions of the Spider-Man origin story. And there's Wonder Woman, who is a child of uh, Hippolyta. Her name is Diana, if you watch the recent one. As you know, as you noticed, I chose Linda Carter because she's the Wonder Woman I grew up with. It's a lot like the James Bond era. So you know how old you are, by which James Bond you know. Okay, so I'm Roger Moore. So <laughs> some of you are probably Sean Connery, and some have reached, you know, the newer James Bonds and etc. So tell me who your James Bond is, if you want to, on the chat. Batman, same, lots of franchises. So um, the reason why I wanted to start with origin stories is because we all, we all watch TV. We've all, we all have favorite films. Oh, Sean Connery, you got the best one. <laughs> I think he's the best Sean. I think he's the best James Bond. So, uh, and who's your Batman? I'm curious. Okay. We all watch these films. We're very familiar with the stories, even against our will. We know, we know where 
Batman's from. We know he's a rich orphan, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Pat, Michael Keaton's my best Batman. He's like, he's my Batman too. He's my Bruce Wayne. Good job. Okay. So we know all their stories. And the funny thing about an origin story is that the origin story is usually very different from the existing present character. So there must have been, easy to surmise, there must have been a morphing. There must have been a change. There must have been an evolution. There must have been, here it goes, some trauma left. That's why there was a transformation, right? Not all of us will pick up a new costume and have a new name, uh, unless that's your thing. That's fine too. But origin stories are so fascinating because you want to know where they're from. If you heard the introduction of me, does it sound self-absorbed? <laughs> I don't care. I'm awake at 4 a.m. Listen, in my origin story, I did train. I, I did train for, a, for 10 years in prison. Uh, and I was an art therapist in prison, in the maximum security prison. And I was assigned the ones who were in the former death row. <clears throat> the reason why I say former death row, because sometime in 2005, they uh, reverted the law. So we, we gave up our, our death penalty temporarily. So it's being explored again, <clears throat> excuse me, by this administration. So I got most of them. And one of the reasons why I brought that up is because I realized after four years, early part, because I stayed for a decade, a lot of the inmates changed their names. They didn't change it like drastically, but but they would have nicknames for each other. I'll give it, I'll give it to you in Filipino, like boy kulot, someone who has curly hair. One is bunso, which means youngest. So that's what the, that's kind of what they call each other. They don't call each other by their names. And I have a colleague, now my colleague, former inmate. His name is Mike. And Inside, he was called Tisoy, which is Mestizo, which is your uh, mix of Spanish and Filipino mostly. And I, re I, and I started to observe everyone. And there is something about, something to be said about when they change their names. Um, there, become, there comes a filter uh, between you and the world um, as opposed to your, so it makes you almost feel protected. Does this make sense? Do you have nicknames? Like, did your parents give you nicknames growing up? Um, I do. Uh, a nickname. A, oh, okay. My old nickname. I then created my own. That's wonderful. I have to ask you about that because that's my study now when people change their names. I really should have changed my name a long time ago because I get, I get that the gang makes people uncomfortable. But if you're curious, gang is the first syllable of my mom's uh, provincial dialect it's actually a language and it's it's a shortcut for love it's like han uh it's like when they say honey or han or sweetheart so if you have nicknames please share your nicknames with us if you're comfortable with it and what you realize now there are people who call you by your nicknames by era like in college you had a nickname when you were a child there was a nickname maybe your full name oh friend okay uh, mine was gang ging like there were two syllables i'm gonna type it out that's what my family used to call me, ganging, and it became just gang because as I got older, it was just easier to have one syllable. Boogie! Oh, I like that. Okay. So can you see how when someone calls you Boogie or Mary, if someone calls you French, you immediately know from what era they're from in your life and you immediately have uh, your, your central nervous system is automatically back in that era. Like, especially when my mom calls me by my full name, usually that means she's very angry. Do your parents do that too? Is that a universal thing or is that just a Filipino mom thing? Because my mom calls me by my entire name when she's really mad. And when I hear it, so, so that's part of our origin, you know, <laughs> is it universal? Okay. The origin story is this, it, it, full name means you're in trouble, 100%, yes. So let's proceed. I really want you to... Um, uh, I, I asked my husband to come up with briefers on how the ba Batman origin story is like. So it's really something like this. You can read it on your own. Uh, if you notice, she, the summaries of origin stories are where they're from, who the parents are, etc. So they name the pertinent parts. And then Superman is this. So Superman is Cal L. From the planet Krypton, and he's a refugee. I like putting it in this in these terms: refugee to planet Earth because he, they lost their planet, and therefore it became his 
possibly I can surmise that it be, he be, he made it his quest to protect the present planet he's in because he lost the planet. Can you see the trauma learning there? Can you see the trauma learning there? So you already know this. In fact, the learning will not happen today. It will not happen within this hour. I'm giving you a set of lenses so that for the next week, while you're watching TV, you can say, oh, Okay, Superman was a refugee from another planet. And this is why he's obsessed about protecting our planet because he lost his planet. And then you have Wonder Woman, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You kind of know that already. And then Spider-Man, who was this dorky guy, lost an uncle, bit by a spider, so et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what contributed to the shift in your story, uh, but there is one, right? There is one. That's really where it's from. So I'm going to give you a really quick because we have a hope we have a dead we have something to do at the end not all it's not just heroes that have um, interesting origin stories in fact the villains have it too and as you know we're not so much in a disney planet there is no clear cut most often you're not just purely villain and you're purely hero we're all of us really a combination of both most of the time, and it depends on the percentage situation and who you're with, sometimes I'm the villain. And I really like the origin stories. It's so interesting. So I want us to have a, this is our goal, to write your five or three to five sentence origin story profile. Okay. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a listening exercise and you will respond through chat. Is that Okay. Um, thumbs up. Can I see your thumbs up with you? I'm going to play a track for everyone to listen to. You may close your eyes if you want, but you need to chat. So you're going to open your eyes. Okay. Yana, are you here? Can you just raise your um, thumbs up if you're here? Okay. When I play the track, I will communicate with you on chat. Okay. This track is called Getting to Know You. Um, I'm closing my video so you can communicate with me through chat, okay? <laughs> Yay! How does your brain feel? How does your brain feel? Right now. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good. I can't force you guys to stretch or stand up or etc. So I just wanted to stretch your brains. And while you were doing that, if you notice, you were doing a creative writing exercise. So are you ready to try to write your own origin story profile? We only have a few minutes left. I'm going to give it to you as homework. How's that? If you come back... And you will, and you shall, next Tuesday, try to write your origin story profile in this manner, like super short. Just make it really short. So it, it means you will leave, uh, um, you will have to choose the pertinent parts that you want to talk about yourself, how you will introduce yourself. But we all know that it's not just that. And we all know there are multi-layers underneath the origin story that's just six six sentences but I think it's also a challenge to try to condense it when you try to condense your 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 where you're from and then we proceed because if you notice our course is following the <laughs> events in in people's lives and your life hopefully this is not just about pop culture this is actually about you so we will talk about romantic errors Please type an exclamation point on the chat box if you've had a romantic error. <laughs> How many of you have had romantic errors? <laughs> Made um, of course, Roma. If you've been ever been heartbroken? Please type a, uh, an exclamation point on the chat box. Ha ha ha. Okay, and then we will discuss career decisions and then family mayhem. Okay, I'm a Godfather film fan only because I had no choice as a child. We had a VHS player and I have five older brothers. And that was, we only had two uh, movies that we owned. The rest we rented. If you're my age and you know what I'm talking about. We only had The Sound of Music and The Godfather series. 
So I know it inside out and the family mysteries. And then we'll have healing. Is is healing possible? Yes, Pat. Godfather 2 is the best. And Godfather 3 does not count. I'm kidding. No, actually, I'm not. In the book, uh, there was no Vince, Vincent Mancini. There was no Vincent in the book. Did you know that? So um, I think I wanted to end by saying you are actually both hero and villain most of the time. I get that. And you know that. I want you to observe this coming week. I told you the learning's not going to happen in this hour. It will be this input and in the coming week. And you come see me again on Tuesday and we will discuss it. Um, I want you to write your story. And if you can, if you can, you have to find <clears throat> this um, theme and play it. What are you writing? You can choose. It could be the Superman theme, the Wonder Woman theme. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Safety pad. You can choose a theme and I want you to write it while listening to the story, while listening to the song. Okay, We can't do that now, but you will do it this week. So much better if you do it on your own. You can play this. You can go wild with Star Wars, whoever your hero is. If it's Moana, I... if you are. So you have to choose. That's your homework. Mary, can you write that down? Choose a song. And if it's a five-minute track like this one, write it. Imperial March, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> Chelsea, I'm glad you had fun. Um, this is not quite the formal end yet of our first Tuesday together. I'm just really getting to know everyone. And I really want you to get to know me and you're comfortable. Um I will stay for a few questions if you want. And Pat is here. Yeah, I, well, I'd like to add something. Maybe what we can do is have people email you if they could write it up and email it to you and you could pick some of the best and maybe go over them at the beginning yes. of the next session. Is that a good idea? Yes, choose a song and write your origin story and do, make it cool. condensed, like five, five sentences. And there's a reason because the rest of your life, you'll be picking through it and you, you will nitpick through it. But the challenge now is just condense it. So this is also the origin story that you would like the public to know you're comfortable sharing. You don't, you know, because that's also always the start where you're comfortable. You know, I have a theory, um, could be very wrong, but I'll share it anyway. I don't think there's a true self. It's too good to say that. I think there's a most comfortable self in every situation. And that's all you. You know how you code switch? Like, you know, when my mom's, uh, my mom is an older mom because I'm, I'm the youngest of 10. So she's very traditional. So she gave birth to me. She was 42. I, I cuss a lot. Like I use bad words like, the, like exclamation points in my, I, I feel such a struggle that I'm not saying bad, too many bad words tonight, but I really cuss a lot. But once my mom is within 500 meters of me, I have no bad words in my brain. You can actually search it and it's gone. Does it make sense? Right, because yes. we code switch, but that's also me. That's also you. So I really want you to condense and we'll proceed from there. Pat, did can you we, did, did, was there a people, question that uh, I skipped? Can we give people an email to, to send the word so they write up the origin stories and we can send them to you? Is that do you want to type that's something okay. in the chat? Yes, please send your homework to me and we can start there. In fact, you know, one of our exercises is you send in your origin story, and then an, I assign an origin story to you, and you ask that person questions based on your origin. question about the exercise that we did, if you want to speak to it. We, we only have a minute or two. But, uh, so when you do that exercise with people, do you generally get similar answers across the board, or do you try to maybe create a elements that sort of if you're working with somebody, working with a client that sort of guide them in the direction that you want to sort of like touch on or something like that? Or is, what are your experiences? When I that, well, it, there's, there's several approaches, of course, but I'm such a fan of music. I mean, I, music save, has saved me so many times in my life and I don't think we optimize it. So this uh, uh, most of the time, music is how I get back to my senses, uh, literal <laughs> the senses, five senses. Uh, so I always ask, what can you smell? What are you imagining? What's the feel? What's the fabric? What are you wearing? What color is the song, etc.? Because I think across the board, generally, because I'm sure there's nothing percent. As long the goal of a therapist is to get 
um, your client or the goal of mental health is to get you back in the room in present time. You already all know this. If if you're left to your own devices, you're you're sad about six years ago and you're worried about two weeks from now. And we're rarely in our bodies. We're rarely in our bodies. And if there's anything that the Trauma Research Foundation has really taught us is that you have to go back. Your body is the is the is your body will never lie to you. It, that's the one thing I'm sure of. Nature rarely lies. The body does not lie. So whenever do, we do the exercise, thanks for asking that, Pat. Um, and I'm aware that the sense of smell is where the trauma is for trauma trigger for whoever I'm accompanying uh, on that session. It's usually, I, I still pick on the sense that is smell so that there's another um, memory attached to it. Mm-hmm. And I really... I'm I'm really a fan of sensory approaches um, to mental health. We get so lost in our brains a lot. And let me give you an example. Do, do any of you have your phones with you right now? If I ask you to scroll, we're really <laughs> we're our the position of our body is really diving into our phones. So when you look into your phone, I need you, Pat, to like move half an inch back, straight straighten your back, and then let the info come to you. Instead of diving into your phone, even just that posture changes a lot. Oh, you're you're on Zoom. It's it's all right, Stephanie. Like, but notice next time you lift your phone and you're scrolling Instagram, you'll slowly feel your super focus intense. Especially if you have no ADHD or with ADHD, doesn't matter. You're super hyper focused, and your posture is almost you're diving into the world of the phone, as opposed to if you move it half an inch down and you move your body straight up. And just let the info come to you. There's a difference. So yeah, your body. So it's usually the, a sensory approach. That's the five senses. They are your friends. So I think that's done. I Hopefully there was, let the info come to you. Yeah, don't dive into the phone so much, Samantha. Hopefully we learned a few things today. And then hopefully I'll see some of you next Tuesday. We will discuss romantic errors. How can you not sign up? <laughs> romantic airs. Oh, gang, that was really fun. Thank you so much. Until then, be well, everyone. Bye-bye.